Hi, this is Mike with AskTractorMike.com. In one of our previous videos, we talked about raising your own food, and I'm, I'm talking with Farmer Dan today. Farmer Dan and, and I are old buddies, and he, he truck gardens for a living, and he also is on the local TV station giving gardening advice. And if you're thinking about you've moved out to the country and you're wanting to move, raise your own food, you, you have a small tractor you purchased, and we talked in our last segment about what equipment you need, Dan, what do they need to know that they don't know? Uh, the folks that are new to gardening on a big scale, what do they need to know? A whole lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's uh, the hardest part about gardening, if you've never done it before, is just putting your first foot down. A lot of people just hesitate and they're afraid they're going to make a mistake. Well, you know, gardening, I've been doing this since I could walk, basically, and I still make lots of mistakes every year. You're never going to hit it 100%. you got to be ready for some failures. But, you know, that's part of the fun of it is that you'll never get it completely right, and you just got to get up and keep trying. And, you know, there's no reward like raising your own food, nurturing something from the ground, and then getting it on your table. I was talking with my mother. She'll be 93 in May. And uh, when we were small, we grew garden and she preserved it and she brought out a picture of her cannon shelf and it was the prettiest thing you ever did see 100 quarts of green beans 100 quarts of tomatoes uh, canned new potatoes pickled beets and just on jams uh, or jellies and all kinds of things and I find that uh, in about the last five years people have really become um, conscious of where their food supply is coming from one of the ways to know exactly where that food's come from and how it's been raised is to do it yourself. So a lot of the knowledge that I've had for years is coming back into fashion and I'm happy to share that with people. Uh, I would start with some of the basics and, and always start with what you're going to want to consume the most. Whatever you like to eat best, start with those things and then if you want to branch out from there, just go ahead. But you know the corn, the green beans, tomatoes, onions, potatoes, things like that do real well in southwest Missouri. How do you keep a person from being discouraged? Uh, everybody at some point usually when they're getting started has a train wreck where everything just yeah. dies. What, how do you get around? You just be ready because it's going to happen. Now one of the things that's probably hardest for the home gardener is that they have uh, summer vacations planned or this and that and uh, gardening is pretty much a, on a daily basis. Uh, the more attention you give things the better it's going to be. But I would encourage people if they have a love for it, um, don't let failure disappoint you because uh, there's so many opportunities to start and stop again. I get two to three crops out of most of my ground so I find that if you if I have a failure on one front and you know that I'll plant something right behind it clean it up and go again and some of the failures you, there's nothing you can do about it I mean when nature brings a late frost when nature brings hail when nature brings six and a half inches of rain uh, when you get a hatch of a certain kind of insect these are things you're going to face and just be prepared that this is this is not an easy thing, but it's well worth doing. That's, that's the reason those of us that grew up on a farm, a lot of us didn't stay on a farm because it, it, agriculture is iffy and you, you have failures all the time. All the time. I was blessed. I uh, lived right next to my grandfather who was retired when I first knew him and uh, my father was a great gardener but he would come home from a hard day's work and he was gardening to fill that cannon shelf so it was kind of a different attitude granddad on the other hand had all day long and he made it exciting for me it was come look at this come see this and I was blessed to have that start because a lot of people started with gardening now you get out there and, and you weed that hundred foot row and don't stop till you're done that's no fun. Granddad made it a different approach, and I think if people will come at it like that, and that's where starting small and not getting overwhelmed will be a, a, a benefit to you. And there's, there's things I've learned over the years that we never tried as granddad or my dad that uh, you can really extend the season and do some things that aren't traditional and uh, pretty much feed yourself out of your garden almost year-round. 
Where do you get information? Uh, you're going to run into insects and diseases um, that just happen. Uh, in certain years, certain insects will be worse. Certain years, certain diseases are worse. Where, where's a good place to go if you're new? Uh, University of Missouri Extension Agency is a great resource. Um, also, seek out people who've been doing it 10, 15, 20 years, and uh, they'll be able to get you real close on a lot of answers because they've seen several seasons and probably aren't surprised by what they're seeing. So that's if, if you find somebody that's been doing what you want to do for a number of years in your locale, that's a huge plus for you. Seek them out and pay attention. I, I think I think a lot of folks could go to their local farmer's market where, where they may have been buying produce. And a lot of times, there, there's a few folks in the farmer's market world that don't want to share information and secrets because they want to sell you stuff. But by and large, most of you guys are, are way more than willing to help people. That is correct. The fellow that I bought the farm from, uh, he had been raising produce for a living for about 25 years. And... Uh, I had just graduated from university with my horticulture degree and been growing stuff with granddad since I was about six or seven and pretty much thought I knew everything there was to know about everything. And uh, he would come down and see me getting ready to mess up and he'd look at me and say, well, now I believe if I was doing that, I'd do it this way or that. Well, for about two years, I didn't take his advice because I thought I knew more than uh, I did and finally realized and Mr. Frank taught me more about gardening than I'll ever be able to repeat. But because of that, I made God a promise that if anyone wanted the knowledge that he gave me as freely as he did, I'd try to give it back that same way. It's tremendously gratifying when it works. It's frustrating when it doesn't, and you just got to be prepared for, for both, right. both experiences. But it's a lot of fun no matter what. Well, and, and we wish we wish everybody that wants to try gardening uh, the best of luck. And uh, I think your your best advice is start kind of small. I, I hear a lot of my viewers that are, are wanting to plant a five acre garden or a two acre garden. And, uh, start with a quarter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Start start small and move up. Yes, sir. And uh, yeah, you mentioned University of Missouri Extension. I, I urge you, uh, land grant universities generally have an extension service, which is. Uh, their research arm that's sharing information, and they have on, online presence. You bet. Yeah. And, 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 it, and it's tailored to your area. And the other thing is some of them have local offices with gardening specialists that will come out and look at your property. And, and, the, and, and the last thing I want point I want to make based on experience, you can have one farm and have two different or multiple different soil types. Mr. Frank said it this way. He said you can plant the same thing in the same place. Uh, the same time of year and you'll never get the same result twice in a row. So between the multiple soil types within 500 yards of each other, the varying weather conditions, uh, it's not an exact science, so no. be ready. Yeah, uh, good advice. I survive on web traffic. I'd be honored if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel and like my Facebook page and share this video with other tractor enthusiasts. And if you have questions or comments, put them down below. We'll try to get back with you. Thanks for watching.